here to talk about a new project. Uh, so the goal of my uh, talk today is going to be to describe to you what uh, Ross and I plan to be doing over the next year. The emphasis of our work is going to be gathering uh, life history and demographic information about reef fishes in a low cost and uh, rapid manner. Uh, the relevance of that to Hawaii Coral Reef Initiative priorities is that we'll be using that information to evaluate the effectiveness of marine protected areas. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in uh, just a little while, but first I'd like to introduce you uh, to our study species. The original focus of our proposal was on the aquarium fish industry, uh, and we chose Centropygi potteri, the potter's angelfish, as our model organism. Uh, this is a site attached uh, broadcast spawning species. It's the number one aquarium fish collected on Oahu. And it didn't seem to respond well to the establishment of fish replenishment areas here uh, on the west coast of Hawaii. So it seemed like it was in special need of study. Uh, in reviewing our proposal, the management committee said, hey, if you guys really are developing this low cost and rapid technique, you should be able to kick in a couple of extra species, maybe mix it up biologically a little bit, and uh, have uh, broader applicability to your results. And, and you know what, they're, they're right. Uh, so we followed through, we added uh, the domino damselfish. This is another site attached species, but it differs from the potters in being a nest guarding demersal spawner. Uh, we also added a third species, the many barred goat fish, and this is a broadcast spawner, but differs from the other two in being more uh, broad ranging or less site attached. Now again, we're going to collect uh, life history and demographic information on these species and use that information to evaluate the effectiveness of marine protected areas. I want to warn you uh, right now that the, the thoughts Ross and I have towards uh, marine protected areas uh, might be unpopular and a little bit unsettling, so I'm going to take you through the rationale behind our project uh, right now. Uh, most of you are probably aware that marine protected areas are often used to try to uh, manage coral reef resources, and these are some of the proposed benefits that are listed uh, for establishing no-take zones on coral reefs. And we agree that most of them are true, and, and we really, we like marine protected areas for those reasons, but uh, we have some uh, serious reservations about this last point. That is, uh, do marine protected areas truly help with fisheries management? And I have to emphasize that we're only looking at the fishery management aspect here. I also have to tell you that our uh, reservations come from our assumption uh, that the goal of fishery management is to maintain catch levels at or above the levels that existed before uh, a no-take zone was established. And this uh, slide should help to uh, illustrate what I mean. Uh, we're aware that uh, abundances or biomass of many species uh, typically increases after the establishment of a no-take zone. But we're arguing that in order to make up uh, for the loss of fishing grounds, some biological parameter inside that no-take zone has to double that in a, in a fish zone. So let's say, for instance, that you have a fishing ground and you're going to establish a no-take zone right here smack dab in the middle of it. All of a sudden, you've cut the number of uh, catchable fish in half. For this no-take zone to make up for that loss of fishery habitat, this population inside the no-take area has to double its production in terms of biomass or reproductive output. And that excess production has to, uh, and this is a very big if, move into a fishable habitat. Uh, unfortunately, there's very little uh, empirical or theoretical evidence that this actually takes place. And if you're with me so far, uh, it also follows that this production must more than double to enhance a fishery. Uh, we also have uh, some reservations about some of the rationale typically given for establishing uh, marine protected areas over using uh, more traditional size or catch-based uh, uh, fishery management techniques. I'd like to show you some of those reasons right now. Uh, the first one is geopolitical. Much of the world's coral reefs occurs in developing countries, and those developing countries simply don't have the resources necessary to do the science behind this life history-based management. The second point is that even if you do have those regulations in place, it can be extremely difficult to enforce them when your coral reefs are scattered around a bunch of remote islands. 
The third point is that the sheer diversity of fishes that are harvested uh, uh, on coral reefs can make doing all of this life history analysis and uh, demographic analysis uh, a little bit overwhelming. But I want to think about the situation in Hawaii here and specifically about the, the project that we're doing. This first point simply isn't true. As a part of the United States, we do have the resources, we do have the expertise necessary uh, to do the science behind this management. Uh, I'll grant you uh, that this uh, second point would be valid if you're trying to go out and enforce regulations along the coastline, but let's think about this aquarium fishery that we're addressing first. Um, most of the fishes harvested, most of the orna fish, ornamental fishes in Hawaii uh, that are harvested are exported from the state through our airports. So all of a sudden we've got a couple of points around the state where enforcement efforts can be concentrated. And it's this last point that Ross and I are trying to uh, make a little bit, little bit less daunting. We're arguing with uh, fast and cheap methods to do this life history and demographic analysis. Uh, that uh, uh, the task won't seem so overwhelming. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to go out and compare fish production in uh, reserves and in fished areas. And the study areas that we've chosen are Hanama Bay, which is one of the t uh, state's uh, two sites that's completely uh, close to any form of extraction, and nearby Moanalua Bay. Um, it was chosen for its proximity also because Division of Aquatic Resources ornamental catch records show that this is the number one collected site uh, for Potter's angelfish on Oahu. Okay. F we're going to look at several uh, lines of evidence to, uh, to evaluate these marine protected areas. The first one is, is fish production or potential catch. And this next slide uh, shows uh, the information that we need to collect and uh, how it relates to potential catch. We're going to go out in the field and estimate the size structure of the fish populations for each of the three species that I've uh, introduced you to so far. Combine that with age and growth information uh, done in the laboratory. Those two together will give us the age structure of the population. And from there, it's a straightforward application of fishery mathematics to come up with mortality estimates. We combine those mortality estimates with abundance estimates also from the field uh, to estimate potential catch or, or, or catchable fish. Um, one of the parts of this uh, project that we're really excited about is we think we've created a win-win situation for, for reef fish management. Either we're going to find evidence that these marine protected areas uh, really are valuable, or if we don't, uh, we can uh, use the exact same information we're gathering to uh, uh, look at the effects of size and catch limits. In other words, we can suggest some alternative management strategies if it looks like the marine protected areas. Uh, are not as effective as, as uh, we currently think they might be. So I want to take you through step by step and show you how we're going to gather some of this information. Size structure is going to come from a technique called laser videogrammetry. Uh, this is simply a video camera mounted with uh, two parallel laser pointers on it. All we need to do to collect information about size structure is swim some transects and tag the sides of fish with these laser beams. Now, because those laser beams are parallel, we're superimposing a scale on the side of the fish. Okay. So we'll go through, uh, analyze our video, capture still images from that video, and analyze uh, those frames, and solve for equivalent ratios to estimate the true size of the fish. From this still image, uh, we can measure the distance between these two points. Uh, we can measure the length of the fish on this image, so we have both the denominators in this equation. We know the distance between the lasers, so we have the numerator on the left side of the equation. So just by solving for this unknown, we come up with the length estimate for the fish. 